there. All right, so I'm going to tune up my fiddle. As I, I did play a uh, rehearsal yesterday for a choir gig that I'm doing next week. So I brought her outside. And I have a gig today as well. Me and the boys are playing a concert series in the atrium of a place called High Park Lofts down on Roncesvalle. And there's a lady there that has that puts on a concert series in the atrium of her building that she lives in. She's a she's a French horn player, this lady. My wife knows her. And uh, so we're just doing we're doing a concert. They do it every so often. They they do a concert right there in the atrium for the people that live in the building. So uh, it's kind of neat. And and we're looking forward to it because there's no sound system. They only want an hour. So we could just show up, pull our stuff out, and play for an hour, and it's going to be really nice. Anyway, so let's warm up our G major there, guys. It's a good way to start. Oh, there's a chat. Somebody's chatting to me. I will, I will take a couple of minutes for me to tune. You take your time to tune, Sharon Blemings. You just take your time. Get that fiddle in tune. No rush. Okay, here we go. G major scale. Up and down. Ready? Go. another arpeggio just to get it really nice and strong for when we practice the double stop. So one more arpeggio. Ready, go. feeling about the key of G. Is it working today without much problem? That's great. Very, very good. Okay. Yes, Tibbs. What do you want, man? He is really mad at us these days. My God. He's just like, I think it's because it's spring. He's just like, what the hell? Anyway, he's a bit of a terror. I'm going to take him to the vet and get his claws chopped because he's just impossible right now. Okay. Let's work on our double stops now. Nice, careful work. So we're going to do the uh, long bows for each set of double stops right now, just to get it all working. And then we're going to try this little circles idea, okay? So let's do it. Double stops. Nice long ones. Ready? Go.
I'm going to give my rosin, my bow a little rosin because uh, I've done a lot of playing on it and I forgot my rosin uh, in the last few days in my case here. So it need, definitely needs a little bit. There we go. My boy is playing the violin now at school. They have a string program at school. And uh, he started off on the bass, which uh, every, his teacher said it was just the most hilarious thing, him trying to wrangle this big bass. But he was getting it working, but he switched to the violin. And uh, he said they're trying to play, uh, what was it now? They're trying to play, oh, it's a French one. It's, I can't remember. It's a simple, simple tune anyway. And he says that the whole class is so squeaky. He says it's just all squeak. And so I asked him, you know, like, are you squeaking? And he says, no, Miss Cardo said I'm perfect. But uh, the rest of the class is squeaking like crazy. So I told him the five leading causes of squeaking. And, and I told him the first one is probably the, 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 the culprit for most of them playing too close to the bridge. It's probably what's going on. So uh, I hope that... Uh, I hope that he gets a chance to impart that to his friends without being a jerk about it. <laughs> I also told him, though, that nobody is ever finished getting rid of their squeaks. And, uh, in fact, I just found out about this string. And I'll show you guys this crazy string here. Here it is. That's supposed to eliminate your squeaks. Now, there was a string called the Kaplan Non-Whistling E-String that I tried once. My friend Pierre Schreier told me about it, and it's a wound E string, so it has a winding, because I'm, I'm sure you noticed that your A, D, and G strings have a flat winding, a flat piece of metal that's wound around the string, and, but the E string has nothing at all. It's just a bare piece of metal, and so it's not very forgiving to the bow. So the Kaplan non-whistling E string is a wound E string, be, making it a little more forgiving on the bow, a little more easy to get it vibrating but I didn't like it because it had like half of the volume of a regular e-string which I find too much work so check this e-string out I was oh, whoops. I was out and chips oh, and oh yeah I bet you were hold on here that's not, oh here it is okay so can you see that coil there you see that it's the wildest thing you can see it here so I saw that somebody said they on Facebook said they were putting putting a uh, a uh, new E string on their fiddle, and I saw this weird looking coil. I'm like, what the hell is that? So then I looked further, and apparently it's a new the Warchal E string, and it's a new type of E string. And when you tune it, the coils get straightened out, but it's supposed to be. Uh, a lot, like when you tune it, when you tighten it all the way up, I guess it straightens out down there. But then when you get it up to full tension, apparently it, it eliminates 90% of whistles and squeaks, but still has a very resonant sound. And I certainly, there was a video there that I watched and it sounded really good, the E string. And all, also on the video and on the website itself, people are just raving about it. So anyway, that's... That's the, the lengths we go to to eliminate the squeaks from our music, you know? Like, I, I recently went on a quest to eliminate all my micro squeaks, little tiny squeaks that happen while you're playing. And it's really hard. And the main cause, for me, the main cause was a tiny bit of an angle that I was playing on that I didn't realize. See that? Just the tiniest bit. Especially when I go over to the E string, because of this, I, I was doing this thing where I was pulling my arm in to play the E string. And so instead, I try to splay out my fingers like this when I go over to the E string to keep my bow straight at, at a right angle when I go over there. And that did the job for a lot of the micro squeaks, but there are still a little, a few little micro squeaks there. So anyway, okay. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do the double stops, but we're gonna do the little circles. So I'm gonna demonstrate first of all. It's gonna look like this. There's Sharon, hi Sharon. Did you get your fiddle in tune? Is it working? Great. Okay, so here's how it's going to go. Now you see how I'm not using my arm. That's still kind of the most important thing. We're trying to we're trying to get this dexterity going with the bow here. See that? So using as much of your wrist as you can, we make four little circles, little notes on each double stop. Now 
Now I'm using the bottom of my bow. You can also use the top. It's a little more work. You gotta dig in a little bit more. But you can try it re really wherever you want. If I would suggest trying it in the bottom part for now, because it's gonna be a little bit less work to get on the two strings, okay? So let's give that a try. We're gonna do four little circles for each set of double stops. A one, two, three, go. Next one. Next one. Next one. Okay, now everybody's looking really good doing that. I didn't see any of this here. Everybody's trying their best to use the hands. It's really good. How are you finding that? Is that working okay? Is it a struggle? I found I was hitting the, the double stops each time compared oh, to, to this. Great. So I don't know if that's normal or... Oh, it's good. It just means yeah. progress. You're just getting I, more used I, to it really good and that's kind of the point of doing it on the big scale is that you really learn you really learn where those two strings are to be on them and it's less guessing see that so now when we do something like this you're a little bit more sure of yourself it sounds great very good good progress well, what's weird Dan is when I do the bowing with double stops it is I it's not working yet it's it's so I was surprised that I was hitting them yeah in the circles versus bowing. Okay. So you're gonna, bowing harder. Yeah, well it is harder. Yeah, so uh, you're going to use this to inform your long bows. Okay. So the thing is though, is that it's probably, I should ask you, what happens? Do you go off of the one string, like two strings only onto one? Or is it the, you can't get a good sound? Or what is it that happens when you try to do it? I'm usually on one string and I have to find the other one. Okay. And the A1D3 combo, the bluegrass one, is really hard for me. It would be the hardest one, almost the second hardest one in the set of double stops, for sure, to hit the first try. Um, so this is your tiller, okay? So when you're doing the long bows, you have to make adjustments as you go along. See that? you got to make sure you're on the two strings using this tiller, okay? And it's very gentle movements, very small micro moves to get back on that string that you that you came off of or whatever it is, all right? Let's do it again. Anybody else have any feedback about doing those little circles? I just wanted to say, Heather, I'm experiencing the exact same thing. Okay, all right, yes. Well, we'll work on it. We're gonna do the long ones next. So, anybody else? Okay, let's do it again, right away. Ready, two, three, go. try it in the other two parts of the bow in a minute. We're going to try it in the middle of the bow and the end of the bow so that you feel 
what it's like to be in the middle and at the end it's slightly different it feels slightly different but between the how much you got to dig in and how much it bounces back right when you do that move how much it comes back at you so we're going to do it again <clears throat> it occurs to me though that it, since two people are having trouble with the bluegrass interval we should we should look at it we should try to try to get it a little bit better so well, the best way to do that is to take the g <laughs> And let's tune the G. Everybody get your G in tune. That's the D3, okay? You can use your open string to tune it if you need to. Okay, now let's put that one down and see where it's at. So my first initial put of the one down was a tiny bit flat. So you guys see where you're at there. This is what it should sound like. Hopefully you still have that three down. Now, let's give it a try. Is that, uh, is that working? Looks good. Looks like people are happy. Let's do it again. Same operation. Tune the G. Tune the B. Let's do it. I should also say that if you look at my hand, do you see how far up and over the strings I am there? See that almost coming straight down because the DA combination is really easy to be touching that other string when you want to play it. So I really have to come up over the fiddle like over the fiddle and straight down with my fingers to get that one. Let's do it one more time. Tune your G. Tune your B. And we'll double stop it. Okay, it's looking great, guys. The hand shape looks really good. So how are you guys getting along with that now? Are you getting along a little bit better? Oh, good. Okay. So now let's do this little circles thing, but in the middle of the bow. So like this. Now I find I have to kind of uh, dig in uh, like that with this finger to get that properly working. And when we get to the tip, it'll be even more. Okay, let's give it a try. Middle of the bow. A one, two, three, go. to bounce back doesn't it god that's the middle of the trampoline it's the that's where it really wants to bounce back now i was experimenting there while i was doing it and i found that i can really be momentary because of that see that very momentary and now i'm just letting the bow bounce naturally there see that it came back on its own there and it was actually enough it was perfect for the note see that Okay, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you want to work with the bounce of your bow, right? Because it'll do that job for you. And as long as you pick it up, then you won't get two of them instead of one, or you won't get a shaky thing. You'll just get that nice clear note, like ringing a bell, and then you pick it up, right? And it's, it, it really reminds me a lot of when I was a drummer. One of the first things you learn when you're a drummer is how to drop the stick onto the drum and let it bounce twice. It's called a double. 
So you drop the stick and it goes tack, tack, and then you pick it up. See that? And that's a double. And a, a drum roll is made of a double on each hand, one after another. Da 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 And it comes together to be a drum roll. See that? And so that's one of the first things you learn is to how to let the stick bounce once and twice. So tack and tack, tack, like that. And it does it on its own. It bounces on its own, and then you pick it up with your fingers like that. It, what doing this really reminded me of that. Okay, you're letting the bow bounce once, and then you're picking it up, and that's the job done. Okay, let's do it again one more time. Middle of the bow, and I'm really gonna do that to show you guys. Okay, a one, two, three, go. So that one there for me, that was really, really good. Like the bow was doing its own thing and I'm just kind of shoving it around a little bit. You guys getting the feel of that? You feeling that bow coming back on you and you're letting it? That's really good. See, now when you guys go to play, say, Madame Naruda or something like that, it's going to be great. You're going to have no problem with that at all when you get there. All right. Okay, so that's G. So let's now, uh, oh wait, the tip of the bow. Let's try it at the tip. Now you're really going to have to dig in here. You can hear the volume reduction there right away, eh? Let's try it, okay? So you're going to have to whack that thing. One, two, three, go. different feels a lot different how you doing there Jilly <laughs> is it working out well I guess that depends on what you call working out if you wanted lots of bounce I was getting lots of bounce at the end of the bow <laughs> yeah yeah now was it bouncing twice like yeah 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 and I had a couple of twice bouncers too you know don't worry about it too much just you know for the next attempt you're going to try to limit it there but you yeah. really do have to put a lot more weight on when you try to do it up at the top eh mm -hmm. yeah good 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 okay guys that's great now we're getting uh, we're getting some good skills here in this key so let's do some stuff in the key of g i think we were doing what were we doing before it wasn't what wild rover it was uh black velvet band i think that's what we did last time so let's do that we'll also do wild rover uh, we'll we'll work out on the both of them What's that now? Yes. yes, music, yes, no problem. Oh, weird. I don't know who this is. Somebody's texting me, but uh, I don't know who they are. <laughs> they come up on my computer. It's the weirdest thing. Okay, let's see here. So we're going to start with uh, Black Velvet Band. Now, I don't know if I have music for it because it was one of the ones that people got by ear. Oh, okay. But I will check. I might. I might have music for it. I, I, yeah. I think I remember it. 
Okay. Well, it starts on three. Three, 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 one, two, three. check and see if I have music for it because I might let's see I am not seeing any music for it okay you're just gonna have to hang on for dear life Sharon but I'll say that I'll give you some finger numbers as we go along I think that'll help okay just telling this person that I'm not sure if they have the right Dan is they said, I'm around the corner and I have some files or supplies or whatever you need. I don't need files. I hate files. Files are terrible things. Okay, so it starts on A3. And there's two of them. Three, 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 one, two, three, two, one. Okay, and let's go nice and easy. Let's go kind of like... Okay, something like that. Three, three. One, two, three, go to. Three, three, one, two, three, two, one. A, D, three, A, one, D, three, two, one, D. A, three, two, one, one, D, one, two, three. Okay, did that work, Sharon? Kinda? Oh, good, okay, let's do it again. So and let's do it like a good three times, all right? So we really wanna get good practice. And I might, uh, I might put in a few uh, double stops there just to give you some ideas in case you're getting bored and you wanna dress it up. And we did just finish uh, working on double stops. Okay. Three times, lots of feeling. Let's give it a go. A one, two, three, one, two. Black Velvet Band. We getting there? Is it coming back for you, Sharon? Slowly but surely. This person is in Nova Scotia. What's that there, Heather? So, so just um, I'm trying to put in the up ups. Yep. Into the into the playing. So if I stop, I'm just. Writing in when you go up, up. 
Let me let me go through it? it. Let me go through it for you right now, so you can just write them all in there. So we got. Uh, so first of all, you go up uh, to start off with. The first note is actually a pickup note, right? And pickup notes are always in an up bow. Just get used to that idea. Pickup notes are always in an up bow. Okay. So you got the up bow, and then the down. So. These two notes are in an up bow, the C and the D. See that? Okay. And then the, uh, that one too. So that great big long B, the A that comes after it would be in an up bow as well. Okay. So it looks like this. Okay. And then we got... That's all single bowed, I'm pretty sure. Let me just go and check again. You know what? Let's just go ahead and up up that part too. It has a really nice feel when you do that, eh? And with waltzes, it's a very common way to bow waltzes. Like, even if I was playing, say, Neil Gauss Lament. See how that works there? It's kind of like down, up, up, down. And it helps a lot with the feel, general feel of a waltz. So that middle part is going to be like this. So down, up, up, down, up, up, down. And then the next two notes are going to be in an up bow. And then the down. Up, up. Up, 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 and that's her, okay? So just this general idea of the up ups is what you're, what you're going after here, and it really does help with the feel, okay? It turns out that this person who's texting me from Nova Scotia is my, uh, is my what do you call that, niece-in-law, my nephew's wife. <laughs> Apparently she works with a, she's a lawyer, and uh, she works with another Dan McDonald. <laughs> it's hilarious. There's a lot of Dan McDonalds. They're, it's surprising. Like, there's, there's, uh, there's a guy who's a critic for the Cape Breton Post, and uh, Dan McDonald, and he, he, he uh, reviews records and stuff like that, and I've known him ever since I was a little kid, and he is called Dan the Mask, because he had... Uh, asthma all through the 80s, really bad asthma, and he would come to the Kayleys at my dad's house or whatever uh, with an air compressor with him, with a great big long tube with the uh, with the mask, with the medication on all the time. Like So he'd be walking around the party with this mask on attached to a... So everybody called him Dan the Mask. <laughs> and there's another Dan McDonald who actually has danmcdonald at gmail.com. And... Uh, and uh, he got my PayPal donations. He's down in, in Tex Texas or something. And I was doing a live streaming thing and I put the wrong uh, address for the, for the PayPal. And he was getting my donations, this guy down the States. So I emailed him and I said, hi, Dan McDonald. I'm Dan McDonald. And, uh, and he sent me the money. He did. He sent me like right the next day he sent me the money. I thought that was very funny. And then another guy who has my email ad address sometimes forwards me emails that are actually mine. And so I'm kind of getting to know this other Dan McDonald. I have no idea who he is. But anyway, there are quite a few of them. Okay, so now that we've got that up-up sort of idea, we're going to give her another go and see how that goes with that bowing. I think it really helps. A one, two, three, one, two. Do it again. 
sent off to Van Diemen's Land. That's that's how it goes, I guess. All right, now how's everybody getting along there the, with the Boeing? It looked good. Looked like people were getting most of it. Does it feel good on the arm? Yeah. And the whole idea behind those up ups is down bow, down beat, right? Da da da. One two three. One two three. One two three. Because your down bow is your strong note. And so you're using that to start off the measures if you can. That's the whole idea behind those up-ups. And hopefully that helps you um, work out going for other pieces in 3-4 that you need to do. Okay, so it's a general rule. Now, how are you getting along with that chair and you get her back all right? Did it come back? Oh, good. That's great. Okay. Now, why don't we try the Wild Rover? I think, was it Wild Rover we were doing? Yeah. Yeah. So let's try Wild Rover and see if we can get that working just as well. Okay, now let's see if I have music for it. I think you did send music before. Okay. I have it in my list. Okay, good. Oh, I just got I just got three pictures of my my uh, my nephew's little girl, who's the same age as uh, Sylvia. And she's getting big. I haven't seen her in ages. My God. The, I have way too many brothers and sisters. Like, there's just no way I'm going to keep up with all these kids. You know what I mean? And there's more coming all the time. Like, there's just no end of it. The newest one is called Poppy. That's my niece Kristen's little girl. And she is so unbelievably cute. Uh, uh, Kristen, that's my niece. She posts pictures and videos of her all the time. And I love her name uh, because her uh, Kristen's grandfather uh they called him poppy right and uh my father they called pops and so uh so this little girl got the name poppy and she's it's, it's a great name and she's just adorable but there's just way too many of these kids like how can you i don't even know how my mom did it she had everybody's birthday in her head like all 12 kids their wives and their kids we're talking about 40 people 35 people something like that she had all their birthdays i just can't i don't get that i can't do that at all we rely on my sister annie now she reminds us she texts everybody when it's somebody's birthday <laughs> and i appreciate it believe me okay wild rover oh did you need the music sharon or do you have it you have it okay great so, I love this one. It's a happy one. Nobody goes to Van Diemen's Land at the end. Okay. Geez, it's a little more complicated, isn't it? It has a few phrases going on, for sure. Okay, let's give it a try. Not too fast. See what happens. Oh, one, two, three, one, two.
looking pretty good. Is it coming together? <laughs> it's a long one, eh? <laughs> okay, how's everybody feeling about Wild Rover? Anybody having any problems that I can help with right away? Can we just pick up the bowling on that, please, Dan? Sorry? Could we go over the bowling on sure, it? Sure, sure. Was that going to be your question too, Julie? Yeah, I don't find it as straightforward as the uh, Black Velvet Band, so I'm yeah. kind of getting mixed up in the middle of it there. Okay, get your pencils out. I'm going to go over the bowing, all right? Okay, so again, the first note is actually a pickup note, so it's going to be an up bow. Okay, so we got the up down. And just straight up down there too. So up down, up down. And the E and the D are going to be in an up bow. Okay, so. So is the B. Those three notes are all going to be in an up bow. Okay. And then it's going to be down, up, up, down. And then up, up, down. For that part there. And then an up, up. Okay. Then a down, up, up. And then a down, up, up. And then a down. And then it continues the same way. All the same. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Uh, up, up, down, 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 down. It's all straight there. Those B's are all straight bowing. Up, up, down. Up, up, down, up. Another up, down, up. Another up, and a down. You see how that plan works there? It really, it is a pattern. Like it carries pretty well through. There's just a couple of changes where we have to, where that pickup note gets put into the slur there, the three note slur there. See that? That's really the only change. Other than that, it's just more of this down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. And if you get that under your arm, it should kind of fall in. Most of it should fall in. Okay. Everybody got that written down there? It's great. All right, let's do it again then. See if it works out better this time. All right. A one, two, three, one, two. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Hey, that looked like it worked out for the most part. How does it feel on the arm? Does it make sense to your arm? Because that's kind of the most important thing with this Boeing thing. It's just the only reason that we do this whole Boeing plan thing is because the down bow is so much stronger than the up bow. And so we need to make use of it. And it feels right, you know. The arm wants to do the down bow. The up bow it'll do, but the, the, the down bow it kind of does on its own. All right. Any questions about any of that? My other advice is to picture yourself at McVeigh's Fine Irish Pub on a Saturday night with the place hopping with, with Irish people and Scottish people, you know, and uh, do, be in their usual selves. And you're belting this out, and then you get to that part there, and you hear them all shout out, right up your kilt. That's really, that's going to be the inspiration for you to get through this song, all right? Certainly works for me. <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's get on to our newer music, which is in the key of A. So that's The Devil's Dream. And we were going to put it together with something. Did I, did I decide what we were going to put it together with? Or did I just mention it? Wasn't it the Irish washerwoman? Well, that's a jig. And, the, and jigs and reels don't go very well together. Uh, well, actually, they, it is a nice change, but it's not very often done. So... But the Irish washerwoman, I wonder if we should give that a quick go. So that's a good one. And it's good to practice. But anyway, now let's leave that. Let's go to the key of A. What I would like to do is, I'd like to put it with another tune. Maybe say Miss McLeod's Reel. Or The High Road to Linton. Or something like that. It would be really, really good. Because they're both in the key of A. Let's see, what would be better? So... Great, let's do that. So we'll do we'll do Devil's Dream. We're gonna work on Devil's Dream now and see if we can get it a little bit smoother and better. And then we'll try joining it up with uh Mrs. McLeod's reel. That'd be a great change. Okay, we can work on putting putting the two tunes together. So first of all we'll we'll work on uh the A major though. Okay, there we go. I've communicated with my niece-in-law, and that's good. Okay, Devil's Dream. Let me get her up on my screen. Or, sorry, first we're going to work on just straight up A major, because that's quite a change from the key of G. So here's your A. So you can tune. And let's go nice and easy up the A scale. Ready, go. change from G. Let's do it again right away. Here's your A. Okay, ready, go.
right? That looks, everybody looks a little bit more comfortable now. Let's try the arpeggio while we're at it. Ready? Go. How's that feeling? We better do another one. Ready, go. Key of A. Everybody getting that under your fingers there, all that stretching <laughs> and those high twos. Okay, cool. So let's do Devil's Dream nice and easy. I hope you got it out there. I just got to make sure my kids have stopped watching TV. Give me one second. Have you guys stopped watching TV? Oh, you did, did you? Thank you, my darlings. They did. They did stop watching TV on their own. It's good. Jennifer's got a gig today. She's playing with the Esprit Orchestra, which is an orchestra that does only brand new, never performed music. And uh, for a tuba player, that's actually quite a lot because uh, the tuba was an only invented in 1840. It's a fairly new instrument. So like all the classical music you think of, Mozart, Beethoven, all that, no tube, tuba. Just wasn't invented. So she has to play a lot of new music. And she's very happy to be part of this orchestra. She's been their, their tuba player for a long time now. And sometimes the pieces are just amazing. Like just unbelievable pieces. A lot of the time they're not. <laughs> I, and we have a saying, you know, like whenever she does an Esprit gig, she comes home and I say, what's the piece like? Is it a honk and squeaker? Because... We, she finds that the, the pieces that are not that good, the new music, is often very atmospheric. And you're just sitting there and you hear like some kind of low level. And then the oboe will go, squeak. And then the tuba will go, honk. <laughs> so this one is a honk and squeaker. And for most of the piece, she's blowing air through the tuba. And, you know, you'd think that would be kind of a no-brainer, but the conductor is a real jerk about it. He keeps saying, louder, louder, louder. And she's like, it's air. What do you, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm blowing as far. If I blow any more, it's going to be a note. Anyway, so that's what she's doing today. The show is tonight. And it's been all week of blowing air through the tuba for like three hours a day. All week. Every day. They rehearse every day. Anyway, there you go. Okay, so Devil's Dream, let's do it. You know, I love this tune. I, and it's because I've been playing it for so long, first of all. But also, it is such an old tune. It goes way, way back. And uh, there's, a, there's a movie called 12 Years a Slave. And you got to hear the way this guy plays it. It's so... It's really, really interesting. But it's, a, it's one of these tunes that kind of goes right across all the... All the lines. Okay, now I'm not sure how fast we were going. Is that gonna work, do you think? Let's try it at that tempo anyway. Let's see what happens. Is this the reason we're doing this tune is the key and the string crossing practice. Okay. Oh one, two, three. Go!
Sharon, this is a brand new one for you. Like, I seem, I seem to think maybe you're looking at it for a very, very new time. <laughs> yeah, so it's new. And yeah. I, I guess last week you sent, you sent uh, two cop, like two, two versions. versions. I guess. Yeah, we're okay. doing. So we're, I was looking at the complicated one. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay. So we're doing so this. Yeah, and then I saw the other one yeah. that you. Had. Yeah. And that is the, okay, just one second. Um, devil, okay, so it's a screenshot and it says the devil's among the tailors. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, okay. Yeah. The deal. I've never heard of it before. I also haven't heard this one before. So oh, really? Just, oh, let me give you a, uh, let me give you a, let me play it a couple of times up to speed, okay? I okay. think, I think you'll recognize, it's a very well known tune. And I think it'll be familiar to your ear, but certainly not this slow, okay? So okay. let me just play it to, to get it kind of in your ear, and it'll get everybody else get their arses moving. sense yeah and yeah the reason we're doing it is all this string crossing it's really good practice between the the a and the e uh, and uh, so that's why we're doing it okay okay let's have another go now that Sharon has the right version and it's more familiar it's gonna be brilliant this time all right you know this simplified version that I found it's okay but it's you know it's pretty simple we'll have to go on to the once we get our hand Working with this, maybe we'll go on to the more complicated one. You know, have a look at it when you're after you finish practicing the simplified one. Have a look at the more complicated one. It's only got a few more notes. It's all really that it is. But anyway, let's give it a go. Sometimes the simple versions are too simple. A one, two, three, go.
It looked great, and what I really liked about what I was watching there is string changing for the most part looked like this rather than this, and that's such a good step forward. It means that we can do it faster. How's everybody feeling? Everybody getting all of that? Is there anything that you're not getting that you need help with? I remember we looked at the bowing last time to make sure that you're starting the parts on a down bow. Remember that? I think I said you could add a pickup note uh, or just do the uh, the uh, continue down uh, thing at the end of the part. So, but the, whatever you do, you just got to really try to start these parts on a down bow. It's going to be a lot easier, especially the second part. If you try to do that whole part starting up, I mean, if you can, right on. <laughs> That's great. But it's going to be a lot harder. You know, it's going to be a lot more, not near as, as intuitive. Now, if everybody's going do, uh, getting along okay, I think we should give it a try a little faster. What do you think? Think we can handle it? Yeah, right on. Okay. All right. So let's see. How fast do you think we can take this? Give it a try. What's the worst thing that happened? You're muted. I won't even notice. You can tell me it was brilliant after. Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, and we're gonna do it twice. Uh, one, two, three, go. you share so I know you're pretty new to this one I think you're still muted yeah sorry we talking to me sorry I was practicing I muted you so I could just practice some of those uh, it is new to me yeah and so I didn't you know I just wanted to practice on my own so 
Oh, that's fine. Hey, that's that's the beauty of this setup. Absolutely. That's fine. How did everybody else? Yeah. Uh, well, one thing, I don't know if everyone else has this problem. I have a problem with, okay, I just did a tutorial on this. I have a problem with the Windows Phone Mini Pro and the Windows Phone Mini Pro. Just one second. Let me bring it back up again. Uh, I, I found that, sorry, I lost sight. I must have closed it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Okay. So I'm finding the problem with the, the D, yeah. Because getting my fingers like, uh, I, yeah. Anyway, I, I watch that this. Problem. Watch this. Very, very good point. So what I do there is, first of all, I put the F and the B down at the same time. That's the basis for for that passage there. So you put that one down, and we practice that, right? We practiced it in the key of A there, right. down at the bottom. So so it's the same move except up at the top. So you put that there. And then it's just this. Da, 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 See that? Let's all do that. So let's get that double stop down. That's what it should sound like. It's kind of a hard one to tune, but uh, you'll figure it out. you got to twist your finger slightly. So we're going to try that. We're going to go D, F, B, F, D, F, B, F about 3,000 times. And we'll start. So get that there. Now put your D down. And hopefully you can play that too. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Go. one ah! okay feeling good it's it, it actually is when you do it that way when you put the one down and you then you only have to move the three it goes pretty quick and easy doesn't it is that feeling better for you Sharon great awesome very good I'm glad we worked on that now let's work on the other one just to say we did ready one two three go You know, this, the, the bow direction is so important for this string crossing thing. Because you see how my up bows are doing the string crossing for me. Because I just got to let my bow drop over to the E. See that? And then bring it back up. And that's my string crossing. Done. See that? If I was going the opposite direction, I'd have to put an effort in to go over to the E. See that? But this way, I let the bow go over there. And it's easy and less work. Okay, let's try that other one again. Let's put that, put the one down. Try to get her in tune. And we have three, one, 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 three, one, one, one. Ready, two, three, go. great everybody looks great doing that the only thing I would say is try not to do it like in the middle or in the lower part of the bow it's always best to do it in the up and the end of the bow I mean it's good if you can do it in the middle it's awesome but it really jumps on you there like the bow wants to jump on you sometimes you use that but not in this case and the bottom is really heavy the, the tip the tip goes all over the place 
It's kind of dragging me over and back, so it's really best to do it up here. Minimal effort, okay? Does that help? Feeling better about those string crossings? Great. Let's do it again. Let's yeah, start with it. a game changer, Dan, with uh, going at the end of the bow instead. Oh, good. Everything That's is easier. Way less effort. Oh, way less. Everything is easier up here. That's why they call it the fiddling sweet spot. See that? And the reason is, is because the weight of the stick is enough to make a note. See that? I'm not pushing any weight on it at all. And then also with the uh, with string crossing, you have way more control. Okay. So keep that in your mind. For the most part, you're going to be up in that top end of the bow. For the most part. You only get down the bottom when you need the power. See that? Then I'm using it. I'm using the weight of that, the bottom of that bow and the bounce to get me through that. But that's kind of a special case. Most of the time, I'm in the easiest part of the bow here. Okay, let's do it. Deal among the tailors. A couple of times. We'll see if we can get it a little faster. It'd be great. Okay. So, like this. A one, two, three, go.
Right. Well, that was a workout on Dale Among the Tailors. How's everybody feeling? Did the, did the speed... Was the speed okay? Sharon, I know you're still trying to get it under your fingers. Yeah. But did you get along okay the first couple times there? Yeah. But uh, the, the pattern is getting easier doing the, the F's and D's and then switching to the other ones too. Even though the other one's easier, switching back and forth. Absolutely. So it, yeah. yeah, but so yeah, that went better. I just had to go on mute and slow it again. Sure, and that's great. No, no, I'm glad you did that. So keep at it and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get it up as fast here as all of us. Um, and it, I was going to say we could do it with uh, Miss McLeod's reel. So let's practice Miss McLeod's reel, but it occurs to me that we should do something in the key of G first. Has anybody here heard of Sheehan's reel? No? Oh, it's a big one. Just hold on now. i can play it for you. If I can remember it. I'm, re I'm getting really used to this. Uh, oh, jeez. I keep keep accidentally clipping, uh, clicking on YouTube clips of these things instead of the music. Down deep, 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 deep. Oh, yeah. So, Sheehan's Reel is, it's an Irish tune, but it's one of these uh, tunes that kind of crosses, like they do it in Cape Breton. We did it growing up. Everybody plays this tune. Everybody. And it's a great tune. Excuse me. Let me, let me play it for you. <laughs> And the reason that I kind of think thinking about it, first of all, going from G to A is such a great key change. Like it's really awesome key change. And also, this tune has a few challenges in it. Yes, that's for sure. My God, I always say there was only one tune, Morrison's Jig, and every other tune is a version of that tune. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is a familiar tune, for sure. Everybody plays it. It would be really good to get. Do you notice how the second part is the same as the first part, except up the octave? Do you notice that? So the first part is... See that? It's basically the same deal except up the octave. And there are so many tunes that do that. What's good about that is practicing intonation. Because what you do down low has to sound exactly the same as what you do up high. See that? And you can use the low to tune the high. This tune is perfectly set up for that. Because you do all this business in the key of G there on the D and the A string, and then you switch over and you do it on the A and the E and you want it to sound the same. So... to compare those and make sure they're they're both kind of brightly up in tune so so prepare yourself for that next week we will try to learn Sheehan's Reel I'll find the best version for you on the session.org the first one here is just deplorable somebody's really stupid idea listen to the second part that they think is cool See that as soon as you see stuff like that, like when I'm looking at the session.org and I see an accidental, I'm like, nope. <laughs> anyway, so I'll find the best version for you and send it to you, and I'll make a video. Another one I'd like to learn in the next few weeks, well, maybe the next month or so, is a Shogun Farewell. Now, you guys know that, right? Jay Unger, uh, uh, Civil War documentary. 
Uh, and uh, also, if you're interested in that type of thing, there's a really great podcast called Smartless that I listen to regularly. And at one point, they interview Ken. You listen to that, Julie? It is hilarious. I find it so funny, but also informative. But they interview Ken Burns. And it is so good. Like, the guy is just amazing. And he said that he bases all of his move, uh, films off of music. The music is the first thing that they do, and everything else goes on top of the music. He says that they've even stretched things out to fit over musical phrases in his documentaries to hit that point. And I think he does it brilliantly. And he was saying how... Anything can do the job. Any type of music, any piece of music can be used to do the job. And he made the point that this particular tune, A Shogun Farewell, which is kind of iconic for the Civil War, 1860, you know, era, was written by a Jewish guy in the 80s from New York. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. The way he presented it made it iconic. And the tune itself is fairly iconic. It has a lot of good skills, A Shogun Farewell. It uses the whole fiddle in the key of D, and it's very familiar. So you guys will already know it in your ear. It won't be a struggle to get that by ear. We'll get it right away. And it's a slow one. It gives you time to make a nice sound and to work on your intonation. And then by the time you're done and you can play A Shogun Farewell, it is a tune you can pull out anywhere and play. And someone will be like, oh, yeah, I know that one, you know. I used to cause talk about when I was a busker at the St. Lawrence Market, that, like a long time ago, it was my guaranteed fiver. If I played that tune at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was on a Saturday, then guaranteed some middle-aged guy would come up to me and say, is that a Shogun Farewell? And I would say yes, and he'd give me a fiver. Every time. Now, I have to wait. Because if I did it at 11 o'clock in the morning, your man, whoever he might be, is still doing his shopping, right? So I'd have to do it right about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'd get that fiver every time. So we'll do that too. So just have that on your radar. Those are going to be the next uploads to the YouTube channel. Are uh, Sheehan's Real and A Shogun Farewell. And we'll get that really good, okay? Anyway, let's practice Miss McLeod's. And then we're going to try to smash these two tunes together. And we will follow uh, with Miss McLeod's. We'll do uh, Dale Among the Tailors followed by Miss McLeod's Reel. It's a great change. Okay, Miss McLeod's Reel. Give it a little practice. Let's do it three times, and I'm going to push you each time. Starting with this tempo. Two, three, go!
it coming back? Slowly but surely, bit by bit. <laughs> Poor old Miss McLeod. Okay, so now we're going to try them both. We're going to try Dale Among the Tailors, followed by Miss McLeod's. And we'll do it, let's say, let's see what the tempo is going to be like here. Where is that? So we could do that. <laughs> Let's give that a shot. Right about that tempo, okay? And I'll try to take it easy. I won't push. Okay, we'll just go nice and easy. One, two, three, and...
Okay, so practice those. It's a really nice change. They go very well together. The, the uh, seam is a no-brainer. So practice them kind of at that tempo. I want to try them faster next time, but that tempo would be a great practice tempo, okay? Now, I know I worked you guys hard today, so go make yourself a coffee and relax the, the arms and the, and the fingers. And uh, anyway, thanks a million, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Ed. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.